uh, Kevin Zeese, that's Z-E-E-S-E, -E -E, and I'm um, a core organizer of the October 2011 Coalition. I'm Mickey Bean and I'm from East Texas and um, I heard about the 2011.org movement through the Code Pink website and wanted to come here to support the effort to end the wars. Great. I'm Blake Hargrove, I'm from East Texas and I'm here with her and uh, I'm just sick and tired of our corrupt government. We don't support any of the two party candidates or third party candidates. We don't think it's time for elections. Our elections are so manipulated in this country that they're false. We have fraudulent elections. What you have basically are two corporate parties and only the corporate approved candidates get on the air, only the corporate approved candidates get corporate money, and only the corporate approved candidates get on the ballot. And so you end up with a choice of two lousy candidates who are funded and controlled by the corporations and don't do the people's interest. And so we're not interested in elections right now. That's a, that's a mirage. We're interested in building an independent movement that will pressure both parties to do the right thing on lots of issues and the main issue is end corporate rule well I would agree with you totally on that 100% however the reason why Ron Paul sticks out in my mind is because he's not influenced based on his voting record by either of the party movements he's a libertarian um, he stands up and uh, his voting record speaks for itself I didn't come here for to make this uh, a Ron Paul movement or, or any kind of a presidential election movement but I did want to show my support because um, you, you were talking about the candidates are, are owned by the corporations and I, I totally agree with that um, I would have to say however that based on the um, our media coverage, uh, the, his lack of media coverage, that you exactly. can honestly say that Ron Paul is not supported <laughs> by. There are the actually media. there are a lot of progressives who support Ron Paul because he's right on the war, he's right on drug war, he's right on changing the Federal Reserve, he's right on protecting civil liberties. So he has some areas where he's right, and so I know I know I work with a group called Come Home America, which is a anti-war group that brings people from the right and the left, libertarians, progressives, conservatives, liberals, all together. If you oppose war and empire, we welcome you to come on America. It's a single issue kind of focus. Uh, but uh, Ron Paul, I think, turns a lot of progressives off because he's wrong on issues like health care. Uh, he's wrong on the social safety net. He's wrong on a lot of economic issues. He has this fantasy free market that doesn't exist. Hasn't existed probably since, you know, before 1000 era. It's a, you know, it's, it's not something that's an industrial era philosophy or economics and so a lot of people are turned off by that but there are progressives who support them put that aside and support them what they agree on for me I, don't, I, will, I will not support people who will do damage and I, the damage I see is in is strengthening corporate power his ideas of free market stuff what that translates into politically is uh, less regulation of government that needs of, of businesses that need to be regulated it, it turns out to be uh, more privatization, privatization of government services that are better handled by government. And so it empowers big business, whether it's his intention or not, it empowers big business interests. I don't think his intention at all is about um, empowering big business. I think his intention is about empowering free enterprise based on a freedom of choice and freedom to um, be an American in America and pursue happiness, pursue success, pursue your right to um, ownership of your of your own um, economic status in the in this world and whether that's that whether intention. That, that's his intention but whether that's the effect will be to empower big business interests that's the, the effect of uh, the effect of whether or not the, the intentions of the people that we have in power now, whether their intentions are pure or not, the effect is uh, just as detrimental, if not more so. I'm not, def I don't, I'm not defending the two, uh, people in power now. Right. I didn't support Obama before he was, you know, when he was running for office. I, I saw through him immediately as a Wall Street Democrat who favored militarism, so I didn't support Obama. I, I supported Ralph Nader and Cynthia McKinney, uh, who's the Green Party candidate. Nader was an independent. And I, I, I stay away from the two parties. I see them as so corrupted. But as I said, there are, there are people who are progressives who support Paul. For me, I can't. I'll tell you what turned me off on Paul was the day he announced he was talking about the Civil Rights Act. And he said that he thought property rights come before civil rights. I don't think property rights are ahead of individual rights. People's human rights come first. Property rights are, are behind, behind individual Isn't rights. Is a human right to have property? Well, individual rights come first. If you come, if, if, if individual right and an inalienable right to own property and to have that um, held sacred, to have that, no one can come in and take that away from you if you but own that property. Comes, yes, but if it comes down to a conflict between kind of conflict? In, individual rights and human rights, for example, does a restaurant have to serve someone who's African American? Does a restaurant have to serve someone who's an Arab? He said he would have opposed the Civil Rights Act because, in his view, property rights trump 
individual rights. I disagree with that, and that philosophy to me is wrong. A lot more into that. I, I, I'm, I'm not sure. Adam, what is your Well, opinion? Ron Paul's take on that specifically would be that any business that decides to discriminate, they essentially have that right just as much as any business has the right to say no shirt, no shoes, no service, and that the ones that benefit are the ones that are going to be able to provide service to as many people as possible so that he has faith in people doing the right thing without the force of government. You don't need to force people to be inclusive. You don't need to force people when they're free and they're able to engage in the free market voluntarily. They won't, they won't exclude anybody it's because it's in their interest to include people. It's obvious in history is he's wrong because for most of the history of this country, uh, the uh, not requiring people to serve African Americans meant African Americans didn't get served. What it boils and down to is that I'm smart enough and I'm, 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 I, I should have the choice to, I, I would be offended if a business chose to discriminate and so don't, I have the right to frequent that business or choose to, That's to. Right. You are, you know, now, now, if, now. That business has a right to do whatever they want to do as long as they're not physically harming someone or negatively well, harming har when, when you harm when someone can't has to travel and can't get a hotel because they're black that's physically harming them but you now if we didn't have the Civil Rights Act and we had let things continue as they were in other words businesses doing what they were doing not not serving blacks not in hotels or restaurants maybe you wouldn't even have learned this being wrong because our culture would have allowed it so much it would seem normal but because the law came into play and said you can't do that against a human being that's wrong that made our culture change and people learned that that kind of discrimination was wrong well law is one way of raising an issue and teaching people but it's essentially using force right so why not instead like drop the force part and achieve those same things through persuasion. How, 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 many, how many years do you want to try that? We tried it for like centuries. How many centuries of discrimination do you allow? Well, how do you know that the Civil Rights Act wasn't possible because education and awareness raising had gotten to that point already that people accepted it being forced on them, but we would have been better off if we had just rejected the use of force as a whole? I don't consider, I don't see, I don't consider government telling somebody to serve somebody force. Force is an act of violence. And I know you consider taxes force. I don't buy that either. I know that's the libertarian philosophy. I don't see it the way. That's community. That's a that's a that's a contract with the people uh, people come into to agree. This is the kind of community we're going to have. Well, hold on. If, if, if you that doesn't doesn't put property rights ahead of whether you serve someone because he's black or not. That's just not acceptable. Well, if you want to have a community within America at the local level where you pay taxes because you've come together and voluntarily agreed to do that, I wholeheartedly support your right to do that. And I think we have an, a, a pretty strong agreement on, on localism. Is that correct, Kevin? We want to, we want to see power pushed down as, as local as possible, as close to the individual as, as practical? Not everything can be solved that way, but yes, I generally have that philosophy. Not every issue is solved that way. For example, health care can't be solved that way. The, the health care, if you divide it up that way, it gets too expensive. If you have one pot, everybody's in, health care becomes affordable. If you have lots of different pots, it becomes unaffordable. You can't you can't create that pot through insurance and sharing risk and spreading it voluntarily if we don't have the governments like uh, with Barack Obama writing insurance legislation, uh, you know, on behalf of the insurance companies. No, it, it hasn't worked because it hasn't been tried. What, what do you mean it hasn't been tried? Insurance companies dominate. Uh, insurance companies control this market. We have right, 50,000 deaths a year in this insurance-based market. That's violence. And the real ending of violence is a single-payer health care system where everybody has access to health care paid for by the whole commonwealth of the country and the evidence shows and what we are what we are is evidence based we base our solutions on what has worked and there's a lot of evidence that a, a single payer health system saves lives provides health care to all reduces the cost of health care and there's a lot of evidence that shows that an insurance based system does none of those things well, there, well, but there's already force in this system because the force is what keeps you from competing with these insurance companies to create your own pool of risk your own common pot voluntarily and they have that advantage that, that is taken away from you because you don't have that. Adam, you're, you're, not, you're living in a fantasy world. The cost of some of these uh, uh, health care procedures is in the hundreds of thousands of dollars. You can't risk that yourself. No one person can do that. No, lots of people should be able to come together. Right, you do have a pool, but you can form that pool voluntarily without government. If you, there's actually research that shows how big a pool has to be to, in order to make that affordable, and you can't make that pool happen. You do it with car insurance. Car insurance is a whole different story. That's that's a different issue because uh, I mean, what you're with health insurance, you're dealing with something that people have to have to live. People need health care. With car insurance, you don't have the you know how the. Do you explain, this, this, how do you explain Canadian health care, this this wonderful kumbaya socialistic 
network where everybody throws into the pot and everyone gets equal health care, but you have to wait six months for a procedure. You, you have no uh, control over this person may get health care that, that's essential to them because maybe they can uh, well, that's, they're, that, they're, that, that is like the most common health insurance propaganda out there if you actually if you actually the health of Canadians love their health insurance it's the most popular program in the country it's the most popular program in the country people the polls show that the person who created that health insurance is the most popular politician in Canadian history because it works uh, the the propaganda you hear here about that wait compared to our waiting lists we have we have 50,000 people dying a year because they can't get health care now that's a waiting list that's a waiting list 50,000 people a year dying of what Where? what I want to do is, is switch gears for a second to talk about what's going on here today with the Occupy movement as a, as a whole but specifically the October 11 2011 Occupy movement which is really distinct from Occupy Wall Street it's there's some common elements it's definitely distinct from Occupy DC as we saw there aren't a whole lot of in fact I haven't seen any Obama cheerleaders here which is very reassuring but I think we're where are some. it's a big group there probably are there's probably there's probably there's Ron Paul supporters here why not Obama supporters well it'll be a, a wide diverse group yeah. there, there's probably some Obama supporters infiltrating trying to make sure that uh, he can still recruit some campaign workers out of this that's crowd, right? The, that's the biggest threat to the occupation movement is the Democrats infiltrating. That really co-opting it is the biggest problem we face. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and, and well, the establishment as a whole, I mean, it doesn't, it doesn't really need Obama. You've got Soros organizations behind different things. You've got ad busters. You've got all sorts of people that would love to take this popular sentiment and do something else with it. But while, while there's this fundamental disagreement on education and health care and some of these things that a lot of people here, people like yourself, Kevin, would like to see the government do proactively, anytime they come up as an issue, you, you always get disagreement. Even if you have 10 people that more or less think like you, and, and, and when it comes down to the how, how should we have a system of national health care, how should we have a system of national education, you, you get a dozen different answers and people are start to disagree. But on what, what people come together here really powerfully on, and, and, and why you're here, is the sort of government shall not issues. Government shall not aggress in, in war against people that haven't attacked us. Government shall not violate our civil liberties with an out-of-control police state. Government shall not empower corporations by giving them billions of dollars that inevitably come from we the people, whether they're printed or conjured out of thin air by the Federal Reserve System. Uh, these are things that, that, that really can bring people together because we can agree that what the government is doing is creating those problems. Now we have different ideas for solutions and a lot of people here are willing to say I, my solution is good enough that we can use government to force it on the rest of the country but do you think people here are willing to put those aside and say well let's have that conversation later so we can get more Ron Paul supporters, people who don't agree with those things, to an event like this. I don't think so because really the libertarian movement is so tiny in this country, it gets a lot more attention because it's consistent with the co corporate message of less government. But the reality is the libertarian movement's tiny. Ron Paul will probably get single digit support uh, and the libertarian party's never gone very far. Uh, I, I just don't see that. What, yes, we can build commonality on opposition to war, Opposition to civil liberties invasion, opposition to the way the Federal Reserve operates. You know, uh, we can we can we, we period. The Federal okay. Reserve shouldn't be operating. Period. It is it is unconstitutional. It should be abolished. I That's agree. The, the Federal Reserve is the Federal Reserve is a big problem, and I, and it needs to be totally it changed. And well, it needs to be changed into actually a government. It. it needs to be changed into a government function, not a banker function. Well, you, we do need to have control of the money supply. You, there, you, there is need to have control of the money supply, but it shouldn't be done by a bunch of bankers. That's the problem. But let me say this then: the problem with your approach, though, is people are here because of economic insecurity, and they feel the economic insecurity of joblessness, income loss, homelessness, poverty, inability to get health care. Those are the issues they want solved. So while we can agree on these issues, we're going to solve those other issues. And you're wrong about people being died on single payer. On our website, we have uh, on the front page seven issues. Super majorities of Americans agree on that's 60. That's 60 percent or more of Americans agree. And on single payer, especially, we present the polling that shows for the last decade people want an expanded and improved Medicare for all system. That's the best system. Now you may oppose it, but you're in a tiny minority. Yeah, to be honest with you, um, I'm not here. Uh, while all those issues are very prominent issues in my mind, and they do worry me, but I, I'm, uh, what good does health care do if? Um, my child is dying 
our dad in Afghanistan yeah, based on a, you know. We agree on the war. We agree on the war. We're here for that. Let me ask you another. Right. Uh, for, for another organizing question, though, you, you say the libertarian movement is tiny. When we had the revolution march here in July of 2008, we had a lot more people than are in Freedom Plaza right now. That was July uh, 12, 2008. And that was uh, when, when Ron Paul was winding down his presidential campaign. There were about 15,000 people on the uh, West Lawn of the Capitol that marched from the Washington Monument. If more people, if it, if, what if libertarians showed up here and there were more than there were of, of liberals or progressives at, at, at this event? If, if, what if, I mean, how many, right now you've got maybe three, four hundred people in the plaza? Okay, well, well but, but we, we, we had... A little bit differently. There are a million people here for the Obama inauguration. You know, individual candidates can draw a crowd like that that becomes this kind of hero worship thing. And that's happened with Ron Paul, happened with Obama. It's a very common political thing. So uh, people turning out for a candidate is not the same. A popular candidate is not the same thing as a movement. This is the first stage. Of the, this is the first event of this movement in Washington, D.C. And it got, we had 3,000 people here earlier today at least. So it's a, that's not a bad first event. And when you look at the, the Occupy movement across the country, it's blossomed. You know, uh, before Occupy Wall Street started, they were the only one. Then this Op Occupy Together website began. A week ago, there were 66. Three days ago, there was 111 occupations around the country oper operating or planned. Now it's over 300. I mean, this is a movement that's blossoming very quickly. So, you know, we'll see what happens. You know, maybe you're right. Maybe there's a, a massive libertarian movement out there, and Ron Paul will surprise us and get elected. I just think he's not getting the attention from yeah, our, right. our media. The, the corporate media is ignoring him on purpose, and they don't want us to see how popular he is. No, there's definitely issues we agree on with Ron, and uh, you know I'm glad he's running. I wish he had won the Republican nomination. I'd like to see that because I think he'd be the most interesting candidate. He'd raise issues that are not going to be raised by Romney or Perry or any of these or Kane. You know these losers are going to like just the same nonsense that everybody else is saying. So it'd be great to have Ron Paul as the nominee, but I don't think it's going to happen. And he couldn't win a general election anyway, not with his view on Social Security. Medicare. Well, let me ask you a, a more specific question then, Kevin, about what's going on here today. If you could double the numbers of people that you had involved in this movement and double your chances of succeeding by just saying, we'll put aside all the government, the things that we want government to do, and we're just going to focus on the things that we want government not to do, we'll get those done first, we're going to double our strength. We're going to really bring the libertarians in. We're going to make this a stronger movement. We're going to get the things that we can really agree on accomplished first. Would you do it? I work with libertarians on issues I agree with them on, as you know. You know, For this movement, would you put those issues aside to include libertarians? This movement, you, if you did that, you'd lose this movement. You'd lose most of the people here because they want to see health care, the uh, joblessness, the poverty, the homelessness. They want to see those things solved, and that's going to take government to solve those. And I know you don't agree with that, but that's what the, most people here think. So we would lose most of the people here if we took that approach. I will work with libertarians on things I agree with them on, like Come Home America. That's an anti-war site. brings people from libertarian to progressive, everything in between together because we agree ending war and empire, ending U.S. militarism is something that's very important to do. So we've come together on that issue, and I'm very happy to work with anyone on that if they agree on that. But this is different. This is actually a, a multi-issue thing. More than 150 organizations have signed on to it, and these people want to see those problems solved, and they see government as part of the solution. I see government as the whole problem. <laughs> yeah. well, it's, 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 it's the problem, and it, it um, I think that if you um, walk around um, assuming that you're going to lose people if you do something without actually presenting that as a possibility and giving people the chance to actually make a decision for themselves, you're actually um, proving the point that our government is doing to us all, and that's uh, ramrodding us with their own political views and not giving us our own choices.